Um, I, have a, I have a small statement and I uh, want to know if you guys agree. I think we uh, should ignore what women say and what they want because what they ultimately want is their own sexual strategy to win. When you start seeing their media outlets as, as a tool for benefiting the female sexual strategy, then it all starts to make sense. This is why women are trying to include their fat sisters. They're like, come up here, We're, uh, it's, it's great here, look at the view. Because currently hypergamy has gone wild and their sexual strategy is winning. So they can afford to include their fat sisters. They want to share a small part of the cake. That's what I think. Uh, sisterhood über alles, like Rollo says. I also think life is war and male sexual strategy versus female sexual strategy is war in every aspect. If one party wins, the other one loses because that's how it goes. Right now, males at large are on the losing side. Of course, the top 10, 10 to 20% is benefiting, but at large, the male sexual strategy is failing. Most men are not being able to fulfill their sexual strategy, the sexual strategy of impregnating as many women as possible. And the red pill is a pushback by males to make their sexual strategy work in this day and age and to push back against the female sexual strategy. Woo. That was a long uh, statement, but uh, I want to uh, know what you guys think. Yeah, 100%. It's, uh, obviously, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, very much influenced by Rollo Tomasi's uh, writing. So shout out to him. And uh, I, like, I like all your guys' uh, content. So I'll keep it up. Thanks for the call, man. You listen, uh, Brent from Netherlands uh, dropping, dropping truth bombs there, man. He's not wrong. Uh, and, and that's kind of what I've been getting at here uh, with the overall uh, perspective of what the feminine imperative is doing right now is, and he, he's right about the, the, the fact that, that, you know, there, and, uh, since the feminine imperative has risen to power or risen into social dominance, I should say, you have to understand that what is its prime directive? Its prime directive is optimizing hypergamy for the largest number of women as possible. And this is an evidence of that. So it doesn't matter if you're fat, doesn't matter if you're obese, doesn't matter if you, it doesn't matter if you have tattoos. It doesn't matter if you, you know, what, what, we, what we were talking about, like, I think it was last week, it was that one chick who was just flying off the handle because it was a Christian lady, the, uh, Sheila Gregoire's, um, daughter was was just flying off the handle at that one blog post that said men prefer virgins who don't have tattoos who have no school no school debt and was just freaking out that anybody would post this much less a woman that sounds about right actually yeah yeah, yeah. And i so, wonder how much debt but, and how many tattoos she but had right? look at the hostility of the response to that and yes. that is exactly what that last caller was talking about is like when you when you present truths like this they have to hit back and they hit back hard and why? Because it's that outrageous to them. And I was just going to say this. It's just us talking about this. We, when we were talking about this before we came on the air. Just us talking about this. We run the risk of having ourselves, you know, uh, deplatformed. We run the risk of, of uh, getting kicked off of Twitter just for saying that. Because even right. if you just present a truth, it sounds like shaming and it made somebody feel bad. That truth made somebody, a, a woman, feel bad. And therefore, it's shaming. Therefore, uh, we don't want to hear from you anymore. Delete. You know, Listen, this happened to me on Instagram just this week. I posted I posted a simple tweet that says I only have two requirements of my pilot, my doctor, my lawyer, and uh, and my surgeon. Gray hair and a Y chromosome. It was up for five minutes, and boom, it was it was down. Damn. Somebody, somebody reported me. Yeah. Well, you know what the thing with that is is I think you guys know that I'm not that politically correct, and I usually just say shit most of the time, and I don't fucking care. I mean, it's how I speak anywhere, any place, any given time. Um, you know, some some people will come up to me, and go, "Oh, you know, you should really water that down," or not. So I don't fucking care. Um, if if I see something, I point to the facts. If the facts hurt your feelings, that's not my problem. That's your problem. I don't need to water down my stuff. In fact, I'm working on a, a video for my channel about the notion of kindness in the world, the way that men have always been told to be kind. Because I had this conversation with an ex girlfriend, and that's part of how the relationship ended afterwards I, I kept getting shamed about how i wasn't kind fuck that you know what if somebody's fat i'm going to tell them they're fat i don't care oh, yeah. that's that good i get that a lot people like women will say oh if you would just change your tone it would be you know people would be more uh, they would accept your thing no it's not no. The tone. why do you get on a it's fucking not, treadmill and lose some weight yeah. right it's not uh, the it's not the delivery it's what i'm delivering I got it's something the information uh, that I've got here. It's the information I'm giving you. That information you find offensive, regardless of whether I say "fuck" in that or I go, "It's okay. You're just overweight. Everything's fine." But you <laughs> should, I, I mean, I can give you it in the sweet little mamby pamby bullshit. It's, it's still the same awful. information. It's it's coming from a guy, and it's still going to end up being offensive to you. 
<laughs> I guess something I, I want to add here, uh, as much as hypergamy, I think, obviously wants to optimize itself, I think women on some level want to lose. Like they 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 should lose and they want, in terms of sexual strategy. So it's, you know, with a frame test in a relationship or even on a, you know, when you meet a girl or whatever, she wants to lose that battle with you. And I think women, and I think that's where they, they want to be at the losing side of it. So you're a higher value. Well, they're losing side of the, you know, the SMB battle for that or the comparison. So as much as they're winning right now and, you know, feminism's taken over the culture, they want to lose that war and it's good for them. They'll be happier when they do. This is this is how messed up it is before we go to the next caller, just real, real quick. You guys have probably seen this, but um, you can probably Google it and find it. But there is a Twitter conversation that somebody screen captured where the guy was like, hey, how are you? The girl's like, good. How tall are you? He goes, six foot three. Why does that matter? She goes, I only date tall guys. So he responds with, oh, how much do you weigh? And then she spazzes out on him like, oh, you're a misogynist guy. I hope you die single, you know, lonely old man sort of thing. <laughs> And that's that's the reality of the world that we live in today as men, you know? It's okay for women to filter out men based on height, because that's important to them based on their sexual strategy. But if men want to attract, you know, only want to date fit women, that's wrong. And you'll go get shamed for it sort of thing. 